Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for part two in the missing persons case of Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow. Quick disclaimer here, these are true crime videos and they are not intended for children under the age of 14. I do deliver these videos in an ASMR style, but I mean no disrespect to any of the victims or their families. Now, if you have not watched part one, I will go ahead and link it above. For part two, we left off where Chad Daybell had just started having these revelations. He believed he was a prophet. He and his wife were living in Idaho, and Lori Fallow's husband had just been killed by her brother, and she was getting ready to move her and her two children to Rexburg, Idaho. So, there's actually not a ton of information about what went on with Lori after she moved to Idaho. We do know that JJ was enrolled in school, and the last time that he attended school was September 23rd, 2019. Now, in early October, Lori rents this storage unit, and she's seen on the surveillance tape going in and out of the storage unit several times in October, and sometimes she's going in there all alone, and other times she is going in there with her brother, Alex. Cox. Now, they bring all of the children's, like, toys and bicycles and put them into storage, and then they move it all back out of storage before eventually putting everything back in storage again. So, these storage surveillance tapes are really weird. No one knows what she was doing. Also, in early October of 2019, back in Arizona, Brandon Bordeu is just getting home from working out at the gym. He is about to walk into his front door, and this jeep drives by and shoots at him. This bullet barely missed his head and instead went into the window right next to him and shatters the window. He was able to get a good look at the jeep and he did see this gun pointed at him with a silencer on it. He describes the jeep to police and I am guessing they check, like, surveillance cameras from neighboring homes, but they're able to track down this jeep, and it is registered to Charles Vallow, who has been dead for months at this point. Two weeks after this attempt on his life, Brandon gets a text from his ex-wife, Melanie, and she's like, hey, um, I'm gonna move to Idaho, so you can keep the kids, and I'll just have them, like, in the summer, or on holidays, or I can take them with me, and you can keep them, just let me know what you want to do. Now, at this point, Brandon knows Melanie is very heavily involved in this cult, 
and he's kind of watched Lori completely go off the deep end. He has now had an attempt on his life, so he consults with his lawyer, he speaks to police, and he decides that what is best for him and his children is to go into hiding. So, Brandon and the children go into hiding, and a few weeks later, Melanie remarries this man from the cult. Just days after someone attempts to shoot and kill Brandon in Arizona, Tammy Daybell is just getting home from going grocery shopping. She's in her driveway, and she is, like, unloading the groceries, and this masked man appears standing behind her, holding what she thought at the time was a paintball gun. He is, like, just pointing it right at her, and he tries to fire it, but the gun, like, misfires and the man takes off running. Tammy calls 911 and she reports the incident to police and she later says in a Facebook post, she has no idea what the motive of something like this could be. Ten days later, on October 19th, 2019, Tammy Daybell dies in her sleep. The family calls 911 and police come to the home and they just say, you know, she died in her sleep. We woke up and it was obvious that she had been dead for at least a few hours. Chad Daybell answers police officers questions. He doesn't seem suspicious to them. He's acting how a normal husband whose wife just died should act. And police kind of look around the house. They take some pictures. Police suspect nothing suspicious. This healthy woman who is 49 years old, just dies in her sleep, and that doesn't raise any alarm bells for anyone. She had not been sick before she died. She had no known, like, medical conditions, and the family did not want an autopsy done, so her death was considered um, like natural causes, and she was buried in Springville, Utah, three days later. Two weeks after Tammy Daybell's death, Chad Daybell marries Lori Vallow. Now, he would later justify this by saying he had a vision that his dead wife came to him and said he, she wanted him to move on and everything was going to be okay. In November of 2019, Melanie gets arrested in Utah for trespassing on Brandon's parents' property. She is arrested and then released the same day. On November 26th, JJ and Tylee are finally reported missing. Now, no one had seen or heard from them since September 23rd. Tylee had stopped posting on her social media accounts and Remember when Lori and Charles adopted JJ, they still made it very clear that they wanted JJ's biological grandparents in his life, and they had been. 
So when these grandparents haven't heard from Lori or Tylee or JJ in weeks, they were trying to call and FaceTime JJ, which they did on a pretty regular basis, and they just couldn't get a hold of anyone. They contacted the Rexburg Police Department and asked them to do a welfare check on the children. The police department shows up at Lori and Chad's home and the children are not there. Now, they ask them, you know, where are your children? We're doing a welfare check on them. And Lori tells police that they're staying with family friends in Arizona. Police obviously are not just going to take Lori's word that her kids are with friends in Arizona. So they follow up on this. And when they realize they are in fact not with family friends, they go back to Chad and Lori's house to find that the two have abruptly left the area. They left their cell phones and they just took off soon after the police had initially been to the home. At this point, the children are considered missing and the media picks up the story and it has been a media frenzy ever since. There is, you know, originally two missing children, but as everyone begins digging into Lori's past and Chad's past, there are also a lot of dead bodies and suspicious deaths. Now, police release a statement saying they strongly believe that JJ and Tylee's lives are in danger. Around Thanksgiving, Colby, Lori's oldest son, calls his mother and she answers the phone and he asks where JJ and Tylee are. At this point, their faces are all over the news media and she just tells Colby, don't worry, I've got everything under control. With Lori and Chad on the run, police begin this official missing persons case on the two children and their main focus is just locating them and making sure they're okay. It has been since September since anyone has seen these kids, and that is very worrisome. Police begin to get this flood of tips, and as they're trying to follow up on everything, they receive word that Alex Cox, Lori's brother, the brother who had shot and killed Lori's estranged husband has been found dead in his home in Gilbert, Arizona under suspicious circumstances. Now, Alex had been married just days before his death and his cause of death still has not been released to the public. On December 11th, Investigators had Tammy Daybell's body exhumed so that an autopsy could be performed on her. Now, Chad had not wanted an autopsy done on his wife at the time of her death, but now with all of these suspicious deaths, police have to look into hers as well. Unfortunately, Charles Vallow had been cremated, so an autopsy was not able to be done on him. On December 23rd, 
the FBI issues this nationwide search to look for JJ and Tylee. Police begin to try and make sense of this case and they believe that Lori's brother Alex Cox was likely the person who tried to shoot Brandon and then days later shoot Tammy Daybell as well. On December 30th, police release a statement that says, quote, we strongly believe that Tylee and JJ are in danger. We are aware that in the weeks following Tammy Daybell's death, Lori and Chad told witnesses that Lori's daughter had died the year before, which is untrue. Around that same time, Chad had told witnesses that Lori had no children. On January 3rd, 2020, police get a search warrant and they're able to go into Lori and Chad's home and search. They seized over 43 items for evidence, including DNA samples, um, prescription bottles, cell phones, computers, tablets, and journals were taken. On January 7th, Charles Fallow's sister, who is JJ's biological grandmother, released a statement saying they had a $20,000 reward for any information leading to the missing children. On January 25th, police finally locate Chad and Lori Daybell in Hawaii and they are served with this court order that says that they have until January 30th to physically produce these children to the court in Idaho and they were also given a search warrant and police searched their vehicle and their persons. There was no evidence that the children had come to Hawaii with them at all. It is obvious that Lori does not have her children with her, but people are really hoping that maybe they're with like family members maybe even, you know, her niece that was involved in the cult. Even if the children are being kept by cult members at this point, like, they're just hoping they are alive. On January 27th, the police department and the Madison County prosecutors file a child protection action on behalf of JJ and Tylee. Police then release the statement that says that Lori Debell has completely refused to help police find her children. She has refused to participate in the investigation and while police know that the children are not with her, they know she has to know where they are or what has happened to them. Lori and Chad's attorney released a statement that says, quote, Chad Debel was a loving husband and he has the support of his children in this matter. Lori Daybell is a very devoted mother and she resents 
any assertions to the contrary. We look forward to being able to address these allegations once they have moved beyond speculation and rumor. Colby Ryan ended up creating this YouTube video titled For My Family where he addresses the situation with his mother and his siblings. I will link that video down in the description box and right above right here. He does say in this video that he does not believe that his mother would harm his siblings, but he also says that seeing her run off to Hawaii with her new husband and not her children, like when he saw that, he was just done. JJ is a seven-year-old boy with brown hair and brown eyes. He is four feet tall and weighs 50 pounds. Tylee is a 17-year-old girl with blonde hair and blue eyes. She is five feet tall and weighs 160 pounds. Anyone with information about the whereabouts of the children are asked to contact Rexburg police at 208-359-3000 or the Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 800 The Loss. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It was a really hard video to research because there's so many dates and places and people and because it's so new all the information constantly coming out is changing and it's just a confusing story. I feel like I really had to rely heavily on my notes this time. Um, I hope these children are found safe. It doesn't look good in my opinion. Obviously, Chad and Lori have no problem just getting rid of people that they're done with. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. See you next time.